got four slips in the gully. Drop it. Again, a good delivery. Gets off the mark on Drop it, but was in an awkward situation. Got himself into a tackle. Well, he hasn't really opened for a while now, so it's going to be something new for him. That one just uh, kicked off. Can make a difference. That's what we've been talking about the, in the design uh, unit. They didn't really have enough pace to threaten the batsman. You can clearly see as the Germany even struggled on that ball, although it's probably one of the best defensive uh, batsmen you'll see in the game. But the pace you're talking about also needs to be much down the ground in the air on the ground. Sehwag is uh, off to a brilliant start, a couple of very nice shots. The turn of the wrist and the ball is away to the boundary once again. They've got some protection on the onside, should he not keep it on the ground? But this was played to perfection, he allowed it to come close. Maybe he'll have a lighter bat when he's facing the new ball and then turn to a heavier stuff. Later on, now that is uh, that sloppy cricket from Pakistan. That ball has run away for extra runs. Four conceded.
I think uh, feeling side was not prepared to back or even take that return from Shoaib Malik. Not quite sure what happened there, but Rahul Dravid ended up with four more runs to his credit. India quickly 34 without loss. They need a good solid start. Rahul Dravid is coming to open. Coming into open, and well, he's sent the right signals. He's leading from the front with an aggressive stance. Captain coming into open. And I, I think, you know, if you consider, Ramiz, that the resources that are there for him, I think this is probably the best utilization of them rather than having Saurav Ganguly open. He's got him where he thinks he'd perform the best in the middle order. So that strengthens the middle order. And he's been coming at three a lot, uh, almost playing the new ball. So he shouldn't have too many problems. Good channel from the fast bowler. Imran Farid is on for Mohammad Yusuf. Got a hundred in a practice game against India. Not exactly a practice game. Uh, they call what side match, side matches. It's getting slightly dark here. It's clouded over. The lights have come on, and you have uh, the Pakistani baseman bowling at about 150 plus every delivery so it's not an easy time there for the Indian openers at the moment three slips in a gully staring at 600 plus and Shoaib Akhtar steaming in not only do they have uh, to look out for his fast bowler fast ball but also his slow delivery that uh, dented England quite badly in that last series but he's got to put it away, Rahul Javid. He's professional enough, capable enough to know that uh, his job is to focus on the delivery and not to worry about uh, the light at this stage because that can easily put you off focus. And also out there, is, he's got to think like a batsman. Forget about the captaincy hassles. This could turn out to be a, a brave move, Rahul Javid. has decided to open himself and uh, as, Ra as Arun Lal was just mentioning, send a strong signal to the dressing room and also to the opposition that uh, I'm here to challenge you. It's not easy to remain positive in circumstances like the way they've had to face in the last two days. But certainly the Indians need to fight and fight hard if they have to salvage anything from this game. Fight fire with fire. Good opening uh, start can give them that platform, and uh, this pitch is uh, playing easy enough, really, for the middle order really to come and repel the attack. His focus is immaculate, he's always thinking about the next delivery. draws away from uh, the challenge because Shah Bakhtar is taking his time. <laughs> 34 without a wicket. That's gone through the gap. Crunchy drive. 
Virinda Sehwag is not going to spare the loose stuff. That's a good shot. That's an authoritative punch off the back foot. Would do his confidence the world of good as well because he had enough time to go onto the back foot. He likes to be on the back foot. So these short deliveries normally puts away with consummate ease. He's managed to crash that through the covers. Again, the balance, the standout feature in the shot. Another fine shot. And Canaria, well, he'll uh, give it a chase. But an effort that will not go down too well with Pakistan. Fielding is not his forte. Again on the back foot that punch. Now this should have been stopped here for a single. But he's a tall man with long legs. Coming down there is not that easy. And with that jumper on, it's not the easiest with that huge rope staring you in the face. Shot one. In the end, uh, well played. It appeared for a second or so that it had got big on him. It was in a good position. And, well, that required some doing to play it from there. It did become big on him. Ideally, he would have wanted to leave this one, but he couldn't. It's a lovely try. Once again, challenge for Canaria. It does well this time. Also, I think Inzamam uh, knows that Afridi has got confidence after his wonderful 100, so he wants to use that confidence and drag it into his bowling. That's whipped away beautifully. Excellent shot from Rahul Javid. Slightly short on the leg stamp. He just whips it away. Just the turn of the wrists. Just followed the line perfectly, Dravid. Let it come close to his body and whipped it. No production there for four. Well, Afridi has got a license to bowl uh, freely. Plenty of runs on the board. So he's, he's, he can be as natural as he wants himself to be. You see a lot of variations from him. 47 without a wicket. Oh, well fielded, is it? Now gone through. For once I thought that uh, Shweb Malik that was uh, running a weave. He's done a fantastic job, but fantastic job done by Virinda Sehwag. That's the area that he favours the most. Short outside the off stump, but he's not taking any chances now. He's absolutely on top and in control all along the ground. That's played away from uh, the fielder. Very good shot. Great timing once again from Sehwag. Certainly will frustrate Shahid Afridi. A little bit of width, and uh, we know by now that you can't bowl that channel on a pitch like this. Flatter, quicker was Afridi, but offline. He's been in good touch. Tell you more about it, Shiva Ramakrishnan and Michael Holding. Thank you, Ramis. The lights are, are on, as we have seen. Pakistan having made over 600 runs, almost 700 runs, will be thinking to themselves that they have a chance of winning this game and they'll be happy that the lights are on. Not too sure how long the bowlers will be happy about that though. On this unresponsive pitch, no one getting any help at all. The bowlers might want to turn those lights off to get off the field. 
Lights have come on a bit early today. Picks up an easy single, Virendra Sivag. It's important to rotate strike as well between these two. It's been a good start for India. 679 for seven declared Pakistan, 59 for no loss is something that they'll be happy with. Just two men catching close to Dravid, slip and a silly point. No ball from the spinner. That is a crime. motion will show you exactly how Afridi releases those deliveries not a big spinner of the ball that's why you don't see so much action on the ball out of those fingers over comes to an end it's 61 without loss found the gap grab it. excellent timing as well Moved into the 20s, Rahul Dravid. Three boundaries to him so far. Couple of runs that Rahul Dravid got through the offside took him to 8,000 runs for India. That's a lot of runs. Don't worry about those other 23 runs. He has scored 8,000 runs for India. He has scored 8,023 test runs, but those 23 runs that you see above the 8,000 was when Australia played against that World 11. You'll forget those. Salman but the fielder. A little complacent there, taking his eyes off the ball. The fumble giving the batsman enough time to pick up two. The umpires had a word with each other, then a word with the batsmen, offering them the light, and they have decided to take it. We showed the lights, the artificial lights being turned on early here at the Gaddafi Stadium. But as we know in these test matches with the red ball, although the lights are turned on, the red ball isn't that easy to pick up in the fading light, fading natural light, even with artificial light. And so they leave the field anyway. It's so a bad light stopping play once again, but more overs lost and time lost today than yesterday. 65 for no loss was India. Virendra Sehwag, 36 not out of 35 balls. And Dravid opening the innings for India, 22 of 44 balls. Shoe Bakhtar bowled quick, so did uh, Rana Naveed. Mohamed Sami also bowled with some pace, but uh, no sign of Danish Kaneria, at least uh, on day two. But we'll see plenty of him, I'm sure, on day three. India 65 without a wicket. Virinda Sehwag will uh, resume the show. He's on 36 of just 35 balls. Looked in a very good touch. Conditions are mild. Sun is uh, not peeping through the clouds, but uh, it's not very cold. 
Rahul Dravid was uh, very solid in his knock. 22 of 44 balls. And it'll be Ranan Uweez who uh, will bowl the first ball of day three. And he's away with a very fine shot. First hour, as always, will be crucial to both teams. Pakistan will be looking to create an impact by picking up a couple of wickets, whereas India will be looking to defend and play as naturally as normally as possible. Good morning, Michael Holding. Good morning, Ramiz, and hello to all our viewers around the world. 613 runs still behind at the moment, India. Very intimidating when you look at a scorecard like that, a total like that, and you're batting second. What India have got to do is forget about what happened previously and think of their batting, occupying the crease. That ball hardly bounced now. Uh, that'll be a worry for the batsman. Day three pitch. You'll um, get to see some variations. But it's much easier for a batsman if the ball uh, goes uh, the way it did on that last occasion rather than jumping up from that good length spot. He'll uh, keep low. And uh, you'll have to uh, keep a vigil on the ball. Another run uh, for India. Rahul Dravid is off the mark today. I just said, Rami, this is a lot better for the batsman if the ball only keeps low. If a few balls keep low, that's fine. If it's few are keeping low and a few are popping off a length, that creates problems. You're not too sure whether you can commit yourself to the front foot or not, but that won't happen on this pitch. That ball is definitely struggling to zip through. But Rana Naveed is not an uh, express bowler. He's medium pace, but Virinder Sehwag had no problems. You have got to keep your eyes on the ball, though. Not all will bounce. Greg Chappell just having a word with the young reserve wicket keeper. Did a good job while he had the gloves last year. It's a grassless pitch, lifeless pitch, full of cracks, but those cracks will not disintegrate. It's well bounded, well compacted, it will continue to be a feather bed. Finds the gap, Mohamed Yusuf will give up the chase very quickly. First four of the day. Struck by Varinder Sehwag. India, 71 without a wicket. Sehwag continued to hit Pakistan badly. He's on 41 from 39 balls. A phenomenal series last time he was here. Rahul Dravid. Well, we can call him a makeshift opener. He's not a regular at that position, but looks a complete natural with uh, Varinder Sehwag at that number two slot on 23. Plenty of classy Indian batting to come. Shwai Bakhtar will he enjoy the conditions. Five overs, none for 14. Not of his uh, full run up. Pakistan would want a fit Shwai Bakhtar coming hard in India very early in the day. All a matter of getting through these opening overs. Raul Javid 
excellent temperament. He won't be too worried about spending time with the crease and not getting runs. It's very important that he spends the time there, sees off Shoei Bakhtar in particular, and then progress from that. Dean Jones was making the point yesterday that it's ideal for the Indian batsmen to think about just batting. Good batsmen on this pitch get in, they can get big scores. This time he'll pick up a run. He's very strong in that area. I remember India, in fact Australia it was, that numbed him through that area by plotting ring of fielders on the onside for Rahul Dravid. Shwe Bakhtar, it's been a ginger start. We haven't seen a free-flowing Schwebachter, and reason could be this. Yesterday, his uh, ankle area was heavily strapped. Feeling the pinch, the pain. He had problems with the landing zone as well. Catch it was the initial call, but he plays the shot really well, Varinda Sehwag. Pretty much intentional. Pretty safe shot once there's no third man in place, even if it carries a bit further in the air than he was expecting. There's no one down in the third man region to run in and take the catch. All he has to do is make sure that he gives himself the extra room so that the ball doesn't follow him and cramps him. And then that way he'll just hit it over the top of Gully and not to Gully. time he withdraws uh, from the challenge the smart operator were in the sewak he'll uh, pick up the deliveries that he wished to hit there's a lot of method in his hitting into that one Schwebachter 76 Schwebachter's um, end, ended the over 76 without a wicket so they had two men close on the onside for him and challenged him to alter his his national game because that is his uh, strong area Rahul Dravid slow one well picked up so Zaman really will have to come up with these uh, strategies to unsettle uh, the maestro these conditions test bowlers and the captains be trying to be innovative trying to do something out of the ordinary that is another good weapon but it could it uh, should be kept as a surprise weapon. India, I thought, overdid it. They see uh, very strong through the onside. Plenty of runs have come square. A couple of good shots have earned him uh, boundaries. Uh, one through square leg, the other through mid-wicket, and one a lovely covered drive. That's played fine. Schwebachter was very square for reasons only known to him and Inzama. You haven't got much chance of chasing and cutting anything off on this outfield, especially down at fine leg when the ball is getting there that quickly. Schwebachter had perhaps 25 meters to travel, absolutely no chance of cutting that off.
This is his area of strength. And he flows. 84 without a wicket. Some presence of Indian supporters. Just one slip in a gully in place now. So Pakistan not over attacking, which is good thinking on part of Inzamam Mulak. You've got to place the fielders where you think that the ball will travel. It's very unlikely that the ball will travel in the slip cordon on a flat pitch like this. There's enough encouragement out there for the bowlers from the fielders. They'll be trying to lift the spirit of their fast bowlers in particular. I always feel that you have a chance against Virinder Sevak if you can set up a one-day field for him in a test match innings. Because he likes to uh, play hard through the line of the ball at times uppishly. Down the leg side. You know that uh, you can feel that he's not yet fully involved, Shreya Bakhtar, in the show. It's been a slow start from him. Not very eager to come hard at uh, the batsman. He's trying to uh, size uh, up his fitness. Front foot and the back leg does take a lot of pounding, Mikey. Certainly does. I know you saw earlier on, Rami, the fact that he was trapping his ankle yesterday. Ultra motion just showing you there exactly how much pressure your legs go through as a fast bowler. If you are not absolutely sure about the strength of your ankle or the solidity of that foothold when you get there, you will hold a bit back. You will be pretty much in second gear instead of being in top gear. And there he is again just fiddling around with the footholds. They look good to me. It looks smooth. Left foot landing quite steady. It's not shifting. No turning of the ankle. So there shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Wants to adjust the field at shot leg. Salman but under the helmet it's a no ball some fast bowlers Mikey do have a lot of issue with uh, where they land I think bowlers that have uh, a longer leap and jump uh, do want to have that area absolutely settled whereas I remember someone like Basim Akran never used to have a problem because he didn't have that leap so it could be different for different bowlers. And he's way over this time, Shrey Bakhtar. Yes, Wazim Akram was a bit lighter on his feet than most fast bowlers because he didn't really slam that front foot down. He used to just run through the crease. He was like Malcolm Marshall, running through the crease instead of actually slamming that front foot down and really powering over the front leg. That was intentional. Another boundary, well struck. Very difficult to uh, nominate the field in the right place when uh, someone is playing an uppish cut shot. You've got to be lucky really to be underneath the ball. You have to be very tall to get to that. I don't think even Joel Ghana would have been able to take a catch off that shot in the gully region. They were hoping it would carry down to third man, but wide of third man and wouldn't have carried on the full anyway 
This partnership 89, he's on 49. Another cracking shot. What a way to get to your 50. Reaching it with a lot of style. It's been a blistering knock. 11th Test match 50. This has been a good positive response from Indian batting. I don't think it's going to be very fruitful to bowl outside the off stump to be in the Sewag. Not that wide of off stump at any rate. I think you need to be a bit straighter, bring that bad pad into play, inside edge onto the pad or onto the thigh pad. Well, he's happy, he enjoys batting against Pakistan. Three half centuries now, a double century as well as a couple of other centuries. So he has them all, half century, century, double century, triple century against Pakistan. It's 9-3 without loss. This must be good, Philip, for uh, the rest of the Indian batting lineup. This uh, brilliant opening start, courtesy Sehwag Dravid. Need to have another fielder somewhere there because he's been able to find the gaps through the onside, which is his his uh, favoured area. They've got three men there in that ring. There's a square leg as well. We can't call it fine leg. It's a it's a square leg fielder there. Well, that was a prime example of what you you were referring to the Aramis. That ball certainly wasn't anywhere close to leg stump. It en ended up on the onside. Even balls as are fractionally outside the line of off stump. Have a look at that. Just outside the line of off stump, it ends up on the onside because he closes the face of his bat so so much. That's what Australia worked on. Restricting his scoring on the onside, forcing him to try and do something a bit differently. Yes, they made him uh, think about his onside play, the leg side play, and uh, he forgot about his offside play also because he was so much focused on making it uh, absolutely right, working uh, all the time in his mind uh, the thought of how to escape those fielders on the onside that he forgot to, uh, to really pierce the ball through the offside in the meantime. of options for uh, Inzama Mulak, Canaria, who's uh, been so good ye this year. Hasn't bowled yet in this innings, which is strange. I think uh, he needs to be brought on quickly. Then uh, there's uh, help for uh, Inzama Mulak in shape of an off-spinner, Shweb Malik. He can bowl now. His Dusra has been... Uh, Label as illegal, so he can't bowl his Dusra, but he can bowl uh, his Tisra or the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wide, a real wide. Afridi was preferred over uh, Canaria and Shweb Malik by Nzama Mulhak. He's an impact player, impact cricketer, and uh, a renowned partnership breaker. Slow one, picked up by Rahul Dravid, 94 without a wicket. Pakistan demoralized dented Indian bowling four hundreds in that knock ended up with 679 for seven went at a brilliant pace to get those runs
catch it. Well, short leg was uh, interested, but I think he uh, was not in the right position because uh, in the end, Virinder Sehwag will be pretty happy to be at the non-striker's end. Ended up being behind square this catch. Of course, forward short leg is exactly as the position stated. He was forward of square. If you're going to be thinking about bowling these short balls to Verenda Sewag and attacking his body, you need two men there, the forward short leg and the leg gully. At the moment, Insamanul Haq is seemingly trying to use one man to cover two positions. He has brought him a lot squarer, just on square leg. Once again, working the ball away with his wrist towards the onside. Verinder Sehwag, uh, once again, special innings. Such a good timer of the ball. And he needed this boost early on in this tour. India need to, be, need to have him in good form to challenge Pakistani bowling attack. Some lovely shots, delicately play that cut shot, and then a blistering cut shot this morning to raise to 50 in no time. Lots of boundaries. Hits the ball very hard, very in the Sewag. Very good time of the ball. Well, they had two fielders there now, but that ball still misses them. Nasty delivery, very good delivery from Shwai Bakhtar. Everything went according to the script except that the ball did not lodge in the hands of uh, one of those closing fielders. Yes, this is not a well-controlled stroke. Mm -hmm. You see, just a matter of it going a lot finer than the fielder. Had absolutely no control over that, mm -hmm. Miranda Sewag. Has never really been too comfortable with bouncers directed at his body. another no ball and Rudy Kurtzen is uh, marking uh, the line just over Giving absolutely nothing away, Rudy Kurtzen. <laughs> Mohamed Sami is quick, but not quick enough to stop a run. They've had an incident-free test match so far. Rudy Kurtzen and Daryl Hare. I think it's got him thinking about that shot delivery. He wasn't in control on that occasion for Inda Sehwag. Nadeem Gauri is the third umpire. And uh, Mr. Madugale from Sri Lanka.
There's a hesitation, but uh, let's still make it. India now exactly 100, 100 without a wicket. Good going by India. First 50 taking 64 balls, second being more attractive than the first one. Slow one's been punched by Vrinda Sevak, and even though Shweb Malik is quick, will he have a chance? No chance in the end. Lightning quick outfield. To tell you more about it, we've got Arun Lal and Dean Jones. Thank you, Ramiz. Thank you, Mikey. Oh, he had to reach for that, Arun, didn't he? He was uh, India, 104 for no loss. India, even after a century opening partnership, still trailing by 575 runs here. In the air. Oh, one bounce wide. It's gone away for four. Lux of fortune. A good hit. Now he's almost always waiting on the back foot, uh, Virinda Sehwag. That's where he likes to be. In the air for a while, though. He hit it pretty well. Got it in the air, but the good thing about it was that he was directing it into the gap. And Canaria couldn't quite make it. Well, this has gone past a partnership between Sonny Gavaskar and Arun Lal here back many years ago in 1982-83, where both you two greats had 105. One partnership there. Well, you enjoy betting with Sonny? I can't remember a thing. <laughs> it was too tense. <laughs> but it was, that was the last time I was here in Pakistan. And it's great to be back after these 25 odd years. And uh, loving it here. You haven't changed a bit. Absolutely. Lost a little bit of hair on top, but apart from that, looking good. Oh, that's all right. Uh, there's enough <laughs> cover there. <laughs> was Imran bowling to you back then? And how. Mm. Oh, God. Well, he just thought about letting it go over the top of the slips, but it just come off so slowly, he thought, oh, I'll just ram it down to third man for four. That's how good he is. Really, the, the thing that stands out about that shot is that he wasn't committed, even till the last instance. He thought about going over the slips. He thought it would bounce a lot more than it did. And when it didn't, he just directed it. So he's not totally committed. He can also abort at the last instant, I would imagine. That's how good he is, isn't he? He just thought when he saw the length so quickly, I'll let it go, then it come off so... Oh, look, I've got enough time to play another shot. Oh, hello. The difference between him and some of the, the stroke play that we saw from Pakistan is the fact that he can hit the ball at 360 degrees. He's got all the time in the world, and he hits the ball down the ground. And it's also... No, he's not bludgeoning his shots. It's, there's a lot of grace in it, and he's straight batted it past extra cover now that's as good a shot as any that you'd see that's really not the length to be bowling to Virinda Sehwag because he's already on the back foot that's where he loves it well he's got 72 and he's hit 15 boundaries so he's not too keen on running <laughs> look at that <laughs> Navid bowling really this guy's a, a, a class act too He's testing him all the time. The shorter one. Bent his back there a little bit more. He has come along leaps and bounds since I've seen him last. Now, another another thing worth watching is that he doesn't go after every shot delivery. Now, he let this one go. He judged the length. He saw it early. He was wanting to, he was wanting to duck under it, but then, then just moved away. That's the over, 116 for no loss. Oh, it's a bit chilly here, you don't often see that. Well, when I come here to Pakistan, the jumpers, and everyone's got the coats out. It's not that cold, I live in Melbourne. And now I can get cold. Danish Canaria, coming on from the college end there, age 25. Tall boy, about six foot one, six foot two. 143 wickets from 32 matches now. Oh, Lindsay will need him to try to break this opening partnership. And they've played very, very well, haven't they? And Dravid 
doesn't mind Seawag just going about his normal business while Drava just plays his shots. 34 from 70. Seawag 72 from just 65 balls. And hasn't done anything wrong. Absolutely. They haven't put a foot wrong, these two. And to me, this is um, a critical moment on how they manage to play Danish Canaria because the next two or three days, it's going to be how they handle him. He's in good form. He gets a lot of bounce. He whips that arm action is so quick. And sometimes I've seen people misread Danish Canaria. And for Indians to do that, he's got to be really, really very well disguised. Well, ball, Danish, this card, Shabai. Now, Shabai, Danish. Shabai, Danish. Shabai, Danish, boy, Shabai. He's just a smidgen slower than Anil Kumble, but what he does do more than Anil Kumble does spin the ball away a lot more. Good shape there, and he has got a very good wrong, and he's got all the toys. They're showing one will call it. The Zura, the flipper, the mystery ball. These guys make up a different ball every year, but you can only do so much of the ball. The Brotherhood, as the, the spinners call themselves. Oh, good call by Seawag. He wanted to get down there. Now this is going to be interesting. Sehwag has been very composed, very selective in his shot play today. But something, something just takes over when he, you know, is playing a leg spinner. It's the time that he gets in the air, and he's not scared to go against the break against a leg spinner. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, there's these beans that go off inside his head that he wants to smash them. <laughs> That's what he, I think he just does, doesn't think that spinners can bowl. He has this attitude. Cavalier attitude. No ball. no ball there, and I think he picked that up there. He was sort of looking to block it. A very quick call from Rudy Kurtzen. Now, let's take a look at this. They've got a long on in position. They're willing to give him a single, although it's the first delivery that he's playing of Danish Canaria. They know that he's going to go over the top. So that, in fact, is an attacking position for him at the moment. Ding, dangling the carrot there with that fielding position. Oh, you can see he wants to go. The big back lift, the flourish. Oh, it's good battle. That's that's what it's about. And Danish Canary won't mind that. Sure, you'll be hurt a couple of times from him, but he'll back himself to knock him over occasionally. Look how high that hands are and the bat is. The big flourish. Good running. Very, very good running. And it's the response of Seawag, I think, really, because he wants to get down to face Canaria. And Rahul Drava's quite happy to say, well, I'm going to bat here for two and a half days. This is actually good running. Now, Seawag has got to go to the danger end, at least the nearer end. The throw generally, because of the angle, comes to the non-striker. Good running. Another one there. Sydney the over, five off it, 121 for no loss. Well, we saw a little bit earlier. This is Shoa Bakta hitting the hands there of Seawag. Here it is in, in, with the ultra motion and the impact there. Can't believe how hard that's hit those hands. It's, it took the hand right off the bat. Now here's. The release time, 93 miles per hour. And by the time it gets at the batsman's fingers, bang, 73. So that's how much it changes. And because of this flat batting pitch. Swing and a miss, Mohamed Sami. Now, I heard a lot of rumours about this boy over the last four or five weeks that he's really trained the house down. He's really been coming up very, very well. Well, he almost uh, did the trick for Pakistan. First delivery, Sevag went after it real hard. A bit too close to his body. 
to really connect. Fortunate didn't get the edge. Just came too close to him. What a shot. <laughs> oh, as if he thought, oh, I can hit it through extra cover, or maybe through cover point. Oh, damn it, I'll whack it through back of point. And that's what he did. He's just so good at this shot. He's in position almost in his stance, just waiting for this. Gets onto his toes, just trying to control it and keep it down. He's pretty aware of that gully and point fielder. Beautiful shot. Enough time. Really, he had loads of time on that one. That's 16 boundaries too, Arun. Not too many singles. Oh, that one's hit right in the screws too. Eleven singles, sixteen fours. Now take a look at this shot. Now he's so much on the back foot that he's even driving off the back foot. But he manages to play on the rise. He loves playing on the rise. So that's why you've got to pitch it up to him. That, that didn't carry. It was just short of the slip. I think it hit right off the toe of the bat. The things are happening here. Enzi is coming a bit quick, right off the toe. This is his 10th four, I'm told, this morning, so he's only dealing in boundaries. And if you keep bowling short outside the off stump, he'll keep going at you all day. 82 runs from 72 balls. It's been unbelievable, the, the, the whole, the number, of the, the run rates of this match. 129 from 23 overs. Well, that's a poor shot. Well, ball from Mohammed Sami. Is it a white ball or a red ball they're using in this match? I'm, I'm confused. I know we've got some one dayers coming up at the end of this series, but God, this this pitch is, is just a bowler killer. Well, this is uh, again short outside the Austin. Not that short for him to really wind into the shot basically trying to late cut it they're getting more protection on the offside now for Sami here it is how quickly he's bowling lets it go just just over 88 and gets to him at 72 which is very similar to almost show back to quick single well that's rare what's going on he's had enough from batting is he it's the end of the over 130 for no loss Drinks have just been taken, and in the first hour here, 65 runs have been scored in just 11 overs. <laughs> and for the bowl, the sad affair for Pakistan, they're all bowled reasonably okay here and here and there. Show back to nine overs, no wicket for 34. Run and Avid, he, he's bowled better than that, those nine overs, no wicket for 54. But here's the match summary there the Centurions, Yunus, Yusuf, and Afridi. And the Centurions for the bowlers as well. Nagaka two wickets, Kumble two and Patan one respectively. Still trailing by 549. And just to let you know, the highest ever opening partnership here between, for an Indian pair, is Gavaskar and, and Chowan here back in 1978-79. They scored 192 on this ground. So a few runs away from that record. But the way these two guys are doing it, they should do it in about 35 minutes. That's the way they've gone today. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They're making a mockery of these scoring rates uh, in this entire test match. Especially when Afridi and Akmal were going at the Indians. But the Indians have started really well. 5.42 is the run rate at the moment. They haven't lost a wicket. Beautifully bowled. It just seems to be a lot more revolutions on the ball going down when Danish Canaria bowls compared to Kumblake. Two different, entirely different bowlers. One a great, as in Kumblake. One potentially can be a great, this fella here. thing about Danish is that he gets into 
line and length very quickly. He's not going to give you too many long hops uh, or full tosses. Very much in control. He's got that quick arm action and his googly is pretty well disguised. The Indians are pretty aware of his capabilities. No run there. He's ever the professional Rahul Dravid, but I'll tell you what would annoy me. Is that strap habit hanging down all the time? The, the helmet strap. I know he, he likes to fiddle around with it. I never liked the chin guard there either, I must admit. But that would annoy me, that, that strap. Why well, he couldn't just get a little toggle in there to keep that up? Quick single. Very neat, compact player, isn't he? Stylish player, but that... To me, I'd just imagine that that strap just hanging there. You can do a in a hook <laughs> shot. Look, he can, look at the way he does his pads up. He looks immaculate. <laughs> Are there these idiosyncrasies in everybody? Do you know? Did you have a few? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I used to always like to wear something new. That's an end of another over. 132 for no, no loss. Well, after 25 overs, no wicket for 32. And unfortunately, I think the umpires have had a little bit of a word there. And they've asked for light, which is given light to the batsman, which is quite funny in a way, because they never looked like getting out, did they? <laughs> 67 runs in just 12 overs, whereby these two, of course, are in a position that can't win the game. There's no way. So prevention's better than cure. And these two players have played beautifully. They really have. Seawag on 84, 17 boundaries, fantastic boundaries, and Dravid 37 from just 78 balls. There's couple, some of the planes that we've got around Pakistan Airways. And Shoah Bakhtar was saying, well, how come he gave him the light? They smashed me. <laughs> but it's been a very good performance here by the Indians. Ian Fraser there, and on this, one of the best batting pitches I've seen in a long, long time. Arun, it's uh, just offering nothing at all for the bowlers on both teams. Absolutely right, uh, but the Indians have to be commended because they were really taken apart and the morale must have taken a beating. Psychologically, they were down, but they've come back very strongly with 132 without loss and they've done it in quick time. So they've really come out positive and uh, so, so far so good for the Indians. They're a long way to go yet, still trail by 547. So. Uh, Really, they can't be looking at the scoring, um, the rates, or the distance that they have to travel in this match. They've really got to keep their wickets intact. They've got to stay focused and play naturally. Show sure, back to her and Cameron Akmal. Just having a little word there. Sometimes keepers say something to the faster bowlers, saying, well, oh, money standing 15 yards behind today why no pace today how long since you've been bowling slow medium just to motivate them and inspire them to bowl a bit quicker yeah that could certainly fire up show back there well a lot of things could happen then <laughs> got the light meters out here now now they're taking a reading which is quite strange to me because they had to turn the lights off to get a proper reading of it now when you obviously when you got the lights on it improves the light no end so now daryl Hare will will take a, a reading, make a note of that, and therefore that's the par for the day. And then anything that drops below that, obviously they, they won't go out on the ground. But if it improves from there, well, therefore, well, therefore they'll, uh, they'll they'll bring the players out. But there it is, the light meter. But isn't it odd? I mean, if you have the facility of the lights, why would you take a reading without the lights? You're not going to play without the lights. You're going to play with the lights. Well, they know when it gets really dark is when.
time to say good afternoon to Bakar Yunus. Good afternoon once again, Shiva. Have a look at this. Only 25 overs been bowled and 132. Even the light has been bad, but uh, the runs are just flowing. That clearly shows uh, that how good this wicket is. Sivag on 84, just faced 76 deliveries. 17 fours. And uh, here to start, Muhammad Sami. And we've got some uh, Indian supporters there, which is good to see. You need to stick to that line. It provided Virendra Sivag with a lot of width outside the off stump and he made it count. Lots and lots of boundaries coming in that area. Mohamed Sami is bowling with one slip and two gullies. Plenty of support for India. It's been a friendship series, India-Pakistan. Supporters from both countries enjoying the cricket. Well, I like the friendship uh, off the field and not on the field. I don't want to see a friendship on the field. But this wicket is very friendly for both the teams. We have seen the Pakistan batting earlier four centuries. And two of them was big, 199 by Yunus Khan, and 173 by Muhammad Yusuf. So this wicket has been very friendly to the batsmen. Nicely stroked. Gentle push, but that's enough to reach the fence. He is in ominous touch. Virendra Sevag. I don't think uh, there was anything wrong with that delivery. It was pitched in nicely, but uh, such a good wicket. All he did is just uh, throw his bat on ball. And once it beats the fielder, you don't really have to run after that because this field is quick. It gets into very good position. Tanish Kanaria has had a lot of running to do. That's where uh, Sivag struggled a little bit. Just a shortish delivery following him. He doesn't like it there. He's a kind of a cricketer. He loves to have a bit of a room outside the off stump. He's literally a butcher when you bowl him uh, outside the off stump. Give him a little bit of room and he'll uh, throw his bat to anything uh, outside the off stump. He's on 88. Needs to stay a lot straighter. Well, we've just got some information for you. It was Virendra Sebag who took strike after lunch, the first delivery. Apparently, the last ball before lunch, it was him who took strike as well. And I don't think they picked up a single. And on the offside, doesn't get the placement. End of the over. It's 136 for no loss. Eighteen boundaries in that 88 for Virendra Sevag. Rahul Dravid, his best score as an opening batsman. 37 not out. His looks solid. Quite a bit of batting left. Bibius Lakshman, Tendulkar, Ganguly, Yuvraj Singh. Ideal start for India. Shweb Akhtar to start uh, from the FC College end. He's bowled nine overs, three made, and he's been good since the uh, morning. Hasn't really picked up the wicket, but uh, he's uh, trying his uh, level best to give a breakthrough here to Pakistan. There we go. That was quick. He's going to be used in short spells. And he needs to bowl quick. That one took off. Wasn't really short, but uh, got a little bit of a help from the wicket. And uh, really surprised Kamran Akmal there behind the wicket. 
I'm not really sure if it's got to do with the weather. But the wicket might have just gone a little bit quicker. It's overcast. You might have a little bit of a swing there for Shweb Akhtar. Lots of protection on the leg side. There's a leg gully, square leg and a mid-on. He's tried to bowl into Rahul Dravid's ribcage. Shoy Bakta. Well, when you have uh, almost 700 runs on the board, you don't expect uh, only one slip. But then Zamam al Haq decided to just keep one slip and spread his fielders around. He knows the goodness of the pitch. So anything goes in the air, he wants to make sure that it's taken. So I don't think it's going to go into the slips or it's going to carry to the slips. So it's a good decision by him that putting one slip and spreading his fielders around. He's got a sort of fourth or you can call it a gully there. Hundred and forty five ninety miles an hour. That's pretty quick. Just having a word, uh, Rudy Kurtzen, with Virendra Sevag, and I guess it's about the last ball before lunch. Danish Kanaria, that's on the left of your screen. Virendra Sevag was the man on strike. And to your right, it's Mohamed Sami, and Virendra Sevag again was on strike. Sevag did not pick up a single before lunch, but he retained strike. That's a mystery. Once one drive it. I think the umpires were too worried about the light. That's why they didn't really, they didn't really, really note who's uh, facing just before lunch. And uh, Sivak took the initiative to just go and bat again. I'm not really sure uh, what both the umpires were thinking. They've been just uh, too worried about the lights. Didn't recognize the batsman, poor light. They shouldn't be there in the middle then. That means uh, Rahul Dravid shouldn't be still facing, it should be Sevag facing uh, this over. Because the only run came in the last over was a boundary from uh, Sivag. But never mind, it's all gone. He's been having a long chat, uh, Greg Chavel, with Gautam Gambir, now with the other opener, Basim Jaffa. Well, I'm not really too sure that uh, talking to a youngster for that long, we saw him uh, talking for a good half an hour, 40 minutes. That's nicely bowled there by Shoya Bakhtar. 27 overs gone, 136 for no wicket. Good, strong reply by India. 136 for no loss. He's batting on 88, we're in the Sevag. A lot of people. Not like the fact that he was getting into 30s and 40s and getting himself out. And he had the point to prove. And he's proving it here. On 88, he needs to get a big one. That's a good record against the Pakistanis, Virendra Sebag. Have a look at the average here. 107 uh, against Pakistan. Thousand run over thousand runs in just seven games. Played very fine. The man at square leg was far too square, and Brenda Seba playing it late and playing it well. 19th boundary. It's not a bad idea to bowl there, but you need to have a protection. There's no short leg, there's no leg gully. I know he did struggle there in that part of uh, his body. He doesn't like it. 
round his uh, thigh or maybe touch higher but there's no protection there's only fine leg which is very wide and it's got a square leg he's got two gullies that's his strength where you're looking at into the 90s 92 along with Sami overstepping I'll have a look at here on the on side of uh, Sivag. It's uh, got only one fielder, which is uh, here, and then uh, there's got uh, one fielder just there in fine leg. And he hasn't got anybody down at short leg, which I thought uh, was very important, which, uh, where he really struggled early on, especially against Shweb Akhtar. Hands were coming off the bat when he was playing that uh, delivery onto his body be a good idea he doesn't really like it there he's got uh, two gullies there and they're looking to give uh, a width outside the off stump that's his strong point Sivags you cannot afford to ball there he's gonna keep you hitting you for fourth through there He's picked up a lot of boundaries through that area you were mentioning, Bakar. There's been lots and lots of width provided for Sebag. And the offside, he's just marvellous. When they bowled straight, he used his bottom hand to good, effect, good use of the wrist, worked it down to the onside. High percentage of runs and boundaries. Again, overpitched, opening the face of the bat at the last moment. He's racing close to his 100. He's on 96. That's exactly what I was talking about. Anything outside the off stump, he's going to murder it. And that's exactly what he did. Pissed up. Although he's on his back foot, all he needs to do is just shift his weight onto the front foot. And that's exactly what he did. Although he played away from his body, angled the bat a little bit. And that one now once again raced to the boundary. Todd Ball to win the over 28 overs gone. It's 145 for Nolos. Not very good news if you're an Indian fan, or for that matter, a fan who loves watching batting. We're in the Seba going strong. On 96, drop it on 37. And it's been the light has been offered to the batsman and they've taken it. Well, Siva, I don't really understand what's this all about. I mean, you don't really have to go in if, uh, if the light's bad. I mean, I don't, I don't see any difference what it was about 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. An umpire has decided to go in. When the lights are on, you don't really... You know, they're hitting boundaries. I, I, I don't see having Siva having any problem... Uh, against end the, both these bowlers but uh, I know they're gonna take the light because uh, they don't want to play for too long they don't want to give Pakistan any chance but uh, I don't really understand this uh, theory of lights on and uh, playing and then coming off ICC got to do something about it 145 no way Still striving for some pace here, Shoaib Akhtar. He has been bothering 
Rahul grab it a bit with a few short balls. Saw a good short ball yesterday that Rahul Dravid managed to keep down, falling well short of the man at Gully. Shoei Bakta bowled 10 overs yesterday, bowled well. Bowled four maidens, uh, 34 for no wicket. Pakistan still waiting for their first breakthrough. First run this morning. Both these batsmen are playing their natural game. Rahul Dravid has uh, always been a, a wall. It's been very, very straight. He hasn't really tried anything uh, silly. He's just been very focused, very compact. On the other hand, uh, Sivag is... Uh, very aggressive as always loves to play a stroke that's his strength he says uh, if i can play a stroke if i can play, hit the ball i don't really have to block it there you go 96 just face not 89 deliveries amazing thing is that hit he hit 20 boundaries it's amazing it's a fast outfield and he said that they have been preventing his singles so he's hitting fours what perhaps Pakistan need to start thinking about is preventing those fours. We saw it yesterday at times, Shoaib Akhtar banging the ball in short, looking to get into the rib cage of Sewag. He had a forward short leg. He had a man at leg gully as well. He is bringing that forward short leg in now. Wasn't there for the first delivery. In comes a short leg. No leg gully in place yet though. Almost, almost right back. Brenda Savag has struggled early on, especially against the new ball with that short delivery coming into him. He was, uh, I think, expecting a short delivery on his back foot. Almost carried to Shri Bakhtar. It's a little bit of reverse swing, uh, as you can see the shine toward the right hand side of the bowler's hand They're not very far from uh, Shwe Bakhtar wait on umpire Rudy Kurtz in here leg by as it is As we've been talking about this pitch, no pace at all. Shri Bakhtar banging that one and looking for that uh, ball to rise a bit more. But uh, so easy for the batsman to just uh, play down. Have a look at the pitch this uh, morning. Nothing has really changed. A bit of uh, foot marks with the bowler's uh, spikes. But uh, this pitch, if you go back and see in the first morning, is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Maybe a touch uh, wider these uh, cracks, but... Uh, Hasn't really made any difference, especially when the cloud covers are on. I don't think it's going to do anything, not even turn, no pace, nothing. No! I suppose the only thing that someone like Shoaib Akhtar at his pace can hope for is a few balls keeping low. If he bowls straight enough and a few balls keep low, that could create a problem or two. Apart from that, not much help, not much encouragement there. Well, normally, because Afi Stadium pitch uh, 
if you go back in 90s and 80s, uh, normally pitches are pretty good. I haven't seen anything like this uh, in my 20 years being around this uh, stadium. This has been the flattest I've seen. Overbold, 148 with the outlaws. Sehwag on 96. He likes spinners. Got it. And there we go. That brings up the century. Well, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen uh, Sevag blocking anything uh, coming uh, from uh, Danish Kanea. That one uh, turned a little bit, but uh, beautifully on top of it. Well deserved hundred. Beautifully played. Only faced 93 deliveries. This is uh, 11th uh, Test hundred. So the man is in great nick. The first ball faced. As he said, if it's there to be hit, I'll hit it. His fourth century against Pakistan. Well, Mikey, I don't think it was there to be hit, but he made it. <laughs> yes, you wouldn't really say it was a bad delivery from Danish Kaneria. But he made sure it went for four. No ball, and there he goes again. Don't think it would have mattered if it was a no ball. It was that full. Well, he's so good uh, on the offside as well as on the onside, especially against the spinner. He, did, he, he does play that uh, open blade shot over the extra cover. And that, have a look at this. It wasn't really pitched outside the off stump. It was pitched maybe middle stump. And he made himself a bit of a room. Leg goes out of the line of the stump of the ball and then hit it over the cover. Beautiful shot. I wouldn't like to be at silly point. As I said, that would have hurt. Well, there's an appeal. I think it perhaps hit into the ground though. And then the leg. The umpires will confer and more than likely they will refer this to the television replay umpire. But that would have hurt. Nobody's got any sympathies for the man uh, on the floor. All are worried about the catch. Now they're all gathering up. There you go. Have a look. He hit that into the ground, just as I thought. Then it hit the boot. Well, that one uh, definitely hit uh, onto the ground. This probably angle will tell us the story. There you go. Hit onto the pitch, onto Butt's uh, ankle and. Uh, Tamra Nakmal, look, catch that one. Yes, green light. Good decision. Well ball, Danish. Oh, what happened there? Let's see what the umpire says about this. Well, he gave four runs. And again, just get the feeling he's not watching the ball onto his bat. Virendra Sebag, much fuller this time. Again, the silly point. He's not interested. That ball but understandable, money, taking money. evasive action. And Sebag is on strike. Well, Shiva, one thing is for certain. Rahul Dravid is not going to go up to him and suggest him things. Because he knows that he can't stop Sevag. Almost impossible to uh, make him change his game plan. That'd be sensible from Rahul Javed. Because he gives him uh, runs. And runs are important. That's a boundary. Lovely shot. Excellent drive from him. Perfect example of the way he bats. Virendra Sevag missed two. It didn't stop him from playing that shot again. And when it hits the bat, it rockets to the fence. 24 boundaries for him so far. Very good balance, clean strike. This is where he's so good. No, no, no. 
Misfielded by Schwebacher, allows him a run. Not certainly very sure about uh, Shoei Bakhtar fielding at point. He's bowling from this end. It's a very critical position, the point area. Rahul Dravid with keep will keep the strike. India 171 without a wicket. Pakistan not yet off the mark. India 171 without a wicket. He's bowling at a good pace today, Shwe Bakhtar. Very fresh, and he wants to prove a point. He had great series against England. So much depends on his health if Pakistan are to trouble India in the series. It's good that he's enjoying himself. There's a big smile on his face. This is a revamped Shwe Bakhtar. Great attitude, he's shown good fitness, and he's been a team player, which augurs well for Pakistan's future. Again, on the shorter side. Take a look at the pitch map through the Hawkeye. You find a lot of deliveries. Short of a length. He's very tricky when he bowls up and the slower deliveries when he mixes it up. See, most of it is short of a length and uh, not too many, just three in the block hole. You need to bowl a fuller length and mix the slower deliveries. That's when the batsman gets into two minds. He's an intelligent operator, Shwe Bakhtar. He would straight away know which length to bowl at on a pitch like this. He hasn't overdone the uh, slow delivery, not, neither the bounces. He's been uh, very much reserved in his, uh, in his line of attack. But we know that when uh, he'll see the opportunity, he will uh, experiment his uh, total craft very smart operator not only the pace that he has but also he's shown uh, a lot of brains in how he operates there's that slow delivery we're talking about misfired by him trying to mislead the batsman was he huge grunt and the slower delivery It's an excellent option that he has got. Rahul Dravid watching it carefully, intently, and there you see the eye line changed because it was, it, it came at a higher pitch and then it dipped. But because it was a full toss delivery, he managed it well in the end, Rahul Dravid. Waited, waited, played it safely. This time follows it up with a bouncer. Now this is good bowling. When I say that he's a smart operator, there was this one example of how smart he has been. Slow one followed by a bouncer. That's what he did against England. Mixed it up quite nicely, had the batsman in two minds. And picked up uh, three wickets in one spell that changed the match for Pakistan. He always has a word or two to say to the best, best batsman in the camp. Rahul Dravid completely ignored him. Nice channel this time. The length was a little up to the batsman. 171 without a wicket. Well, she saw herself on the big screen and enjoyed it down the track that's gone 
over the top of the fielder. He's unstoppable, Virinda Sehwag. There was a man in the deep. Just 10 yards inside the boundary line, but Sehwag will take him on. 25th boundary. A little bit of risk involved. That's a beautiful shot. Excellent shot. He delayed his drive, he was looking for an onside push, and then he slotted it straight over mid off head. Not a lot of spin on that delivery from Shweb Malik, he read it extremely well. Inside out, straight drive now. How can you play that shot? Only Seva can. High percentage of runs coming in boundaries. Look at his range. He started off by belting the ball over mid wicket and mid on area. Then he straight drove uh, the off spinner for a lovely four. And then he has driven him against the spin, trying to find the gap through the covers area. the last over the dark fish coming up played and missed a couple of times but he doesn't let those things bother him mentally it's 179 without a wicket bit of reverse swing but he had to put in a lot of effort look at that bowling speed 94.5 miles per hour and Raul Dravid as cool as ever played it with, uh, with a straight bat defended solidly bit of change in action as well a bit more slingier probably getting a little more round arm to get the reverse swing going for him Bakhtar has varied his pace quite intelligently in this innings. Balls coming at you with uh, at a different pace can obviously unsettle you. Expect the ball to travel hard at you and then suddenly there's a slow one. That last ball, the edge of the screen, was probably the slow one. Rahul Dravid wanted a run, he wants uh, Sehwag to take it up. Talking about uh, variation in pace and speed from Shwe Bakhtar. Top of the screen, at the edge of the screen, on top there. The uh, This ball was a slow one that was bowled really well by him. Turned out to be a full toss, but Rahul Dravid really had to Keep it away. It's the high full toss, that slow one. Nothing happening off the pitch. Raul Dravid has been uh, very solid, solidly placed on 40. Allowing 
the ball to come and hit his bat. Perfect way to play a defensive shot. That bat not pushed away from the body, waiting for the ball to come and hit the bat. pace from Shoaib. He's bowled with a big heart, Shoaib Bakhtar, right throughout the season. And he's not going to go down in this innings as well. On a slow pitch, he's uh, made the batsman think. That bat, feeling the impact of that ball from Shoaib. Nice soft hands from Rahul Dravid. without a wicket. It's that time of the year that you need to be in Lahore. Flowers are blossoming, weather is perfect. That was smashed now. An inch here or there would have uh, fetched him a four. Well ball, Malek. It's been a terrific outing for all the batsmen. Four centuries from the Pakistan batsmen, two of them coming in 80 balls. One centurion for India. Uh, coming in uh, 89 balls, Virendra Sevag. He's making it look extremely easy. He's waiting for the right range, the right spot where he can uh, hit the ball. You can feel it. And also the silly point is now gone to short extra cover. So there is a little more protection on the offside. Also will play on the mind of the batsman. And a little more protection for that uh, fielder also. Now been pushed back to short covers. Make a lot of sense. He's not even going to run for that single. Just easily across for one. A la Inzi style. One eighty without a wicket. Driving on forty eight. But before we do that, we'll just have a bit of that. By gee, he's a great player, isn't he? He really is. It's his twenty seventh boundary. But listen, he's always making space for himself. He doesn't take his foot to the line of the ball. He takes it about a foot away to find the gap on the offside. Amazing. The follow through of the blade, the high back lift. Perfect. Now he's made place for himself and he's constantly doing that, even to incoming deliveries. Oy. Might be a leg by. Just waiting for the technique of Rudy Kurtzen. And there's the 200 up here for India. Well, and there's going, going to be some solid celebrations there. Well done. And so they should. It also equals the best partnership ever for India versus Pakistan. So it's 200. The previous best was Gavaskar and Srikanth at Chennai, 1986. So they're up with the best. 
Well, they need one more to pass that, but at no, least equals it. That's a fantastic effort on any pitch. Drive it on 48. He's called for two. Now, they might be off the pad. I doubt it the way he ran that first one hard. And that might be his 50. Well played, Skipper. You put yourself up into the heat, into the cauldron. He wanted to do it. And it's his 40th Test 50. Third against Pakistan. And only his second 50 as captain. Well played. Very, very good knock. He can really be proud of that effort, uh, Rahul Dravid. It was important when he made this statement of opening that he come out and occupy the crease and play a big one for India. Staring at 679, this is a tremendous effort. And they now have the record against Pakistan. Into the over, 202 for no loss. Quite unbelievable, isn't it? There's so many masters there, according to that uh, definition that you just uh, uh, told us about. 55.85 Sehwag, then Dravid 57, and uh, 43 Lakshman, then the master himself, 56. Ganguly at 41 almost. And even down the order now, you see some spectacular averages. Beautiful shot. He is so good off his legs. He really is. Well, a lot of people uh, say that Rahul Dravid has got the best cover drive, but really he's a natural on the onside. He's always been, from his younger days, he's, he's just effortless. Anytime he gets a delivery around his pads, he can just put it away with ease. Doesn't try to hit it too hard, lets the ball almost absorb into his pads and work the ball and use the bowler's pace. He's gone to 56, it's his highest score ever as a skipper. There you go. Oh, that nip back. Nearly got him in trouble. And it's his eighth test match as captain. He's taken a huge inside edge there. And it took a while for Ricky Ponding to get 100 too as a, as a test captain. Well, even if it hit him on the pads, you still think it would have hit him outside the line. One feels, yeah. But it was a good ball. One of the rare ones. Must have hit a bottle top. Well, that's one of the masters. He's the top of the heap. That's Sachin Tendulkar. He's had to wait a long time. And he won't mind waiting either, if we know Sachin. The timing. Sami. Let's take a look at his pitch map. Well, it's, well, it's a pretty distributed, but generally he's been on the shorter side and outside the off stump. Taking a bit of a beating uh, when he came in uh, to bowl. Sevag loves it, short outside the off stump. So 44 gone, 219 without loss. Danish Canaria. The wrong one. Did he pick it? I think he did. But he's really struggling with his foot now, Virinda Sevag. Don't think he can put too much weight on it, but he's doing all right. I just want to tell you now, this, this opening partnership at 219 is India's second highest ever opening partnership ever. And that, of course, is behind the 413 run opening run partnership between Mancat and Roy, where India played New Zealand back in 55, 56, when you played, Arun. <laughs> yeah. 
Pankaj Roy. That's a fair opening partnership, 413. India versus New Zealand and Madras, 55-56. You were about 14 then, weren't you? <laughs> Not even thought of, thank you very much. A little sweep around the corner, we'll get at least one, two, three, and one off four. Lovely shot, really was from Dravid. And he goes, it's his ninth boundary, goes to 61. Beautifully done. He, he's got this ability to sweep fine. Just keeps his eyes riveted on the ball and they're just using the pace of the delivery. Vinu Mankat and Pankaj Roy. 413 is an opening partnership. God, if you're batting five, you mightn't get hit. Oh, how's that got through? That's a bit naughty, Pakistan. It should be a little bit better than that. Well, that certainly shouldn't have been runs. It was a good shot, but he was in a position to cut it off. Beautifully played. He was looking for the gap. He had played it there. But then Mohammed Sami, just a bit casual, just a little complacent. No ball, one more for it. Have you ever seen 230 runs made so easy in just 44 overs in a test match? I Rarely has the ball ever beaten the bat. I can't even remember the ball beating the bat. Well, a little inside edge once before, a, a while back. But... Amazing. 11 runs off this over. What about a few more? Have four more to that. Make it 15. Wow. I better take a break. 234 for no loss. Well, that just tells you how strong he's been over the last couple of years. He's been strong already this year, hasn't he? He's got 149 and still going. Last year, 785 runs on average tick over 60 and then 1141 runs in 2004 a bit over 63 average 52 the year before that cricket's been great to him as it has been to all the fans when he plays like this it's he's good fun watching well to take you through the next interesting half hour we get two of the greatest quicks that's ever been going around Michael Holding and Wacker Yunus Angadino. And we saw how Sewag was attempting to hit Kaneria through the offside most of the times. Well, Kaneria has decided that he wants to come back. That is now coming round the wicket. Well, well, he's making this look so easy. That brings up his 150 for the Sewag. The seventh occasion on which he has gotten to 150 runs. Not only hitting, but even blocking. He's making things very easy. He's looking uh, like that. Uh, he's in a top form. I mean, you cannot ask for a better form than this. 150 of just 144 deliveries. 29 boundaries. You can't ask for a better one. Pushing into the batsman. There's nothing in the air. All uh, Muhammad Sami is trying to do is uh, trying to bowl with the angle, just pushing the ball in toward the toward the batsman's pad. I haven't seen anything in the air uh, or off the pitch. Ah. No third man. So that brings up the 250 for India. No fear at all in Sivag's mind. Played that very late. That was just touch outside the off stump coming in. And he knew that there's no third man. 
Just a very, very late cut. Four. Squira this time. Ryan Abed having a chance of cutting it off. Well, a touch slower on that occasion from Mohamed Sami. And Swag was uh, a little early on the shot. In the air a little bit. No fear. Have a look at this, Mikey, for here. I was thinking about that colour myself yesterday. I haven't got enough here on my head to be thinking about colours. It's 2.52 without loss. That's up in the light toes. Doing a bit of work on the infrastructure up there. That's gone very fine. I've seen that man at fine leg being very square most of the occasions not only wide but uh, very lazy effort there by Danish Canaria that one uh, nip back a little bit it's definitely reversing Got a shine inside the right hand right hand side of the bowlers but a very lazy effort there by Danish Canaria on the final leg That's a good shot. So strong through that era, Rahul Javid. Pakistan doesn't look like getting wicket at all. And this man, Rahul Javid, is looking very dangerous now. He's approaching his 100 slowly. That one uh, picked the gap very nicely. Beautiful timing. Inzaman is trying everything. Shoy Bakhtar had a short spell Mohamed Sami now he's run an Abed's time Navid operating from the pavilion end and uh, have a look at this he's hiding the ball he's hiding the shine he doesn't want the batsman to look at the shine because uh, sometimes it gets very easier for a batsman to bat against if you can see the shine when it's reversing so he's uh, trying to hide there the shine till the maximum time he can there you go when he gets into action he can't really hold it for too long and that's when uh, he let the left hand off the ball I have a suggestion for Ran and Abed here Wakar I think you should try hiding the ball even after he has released it that's the only way I think you can get anyone out on this pitch well he's trying his best He's putting uh, every effort he's got. He's just shining the ball. That's, uh, that's definitely going to nip back a little bit. Not really. Not a lot happening. 2-6 to six without loss. Again, a bit of turn for Danish Canaria. Again, what he needs to do now is stay consistent. That would test the batsman. Well, this is a bit of a battle within a battle now. Danish Canaria has got it right. He's coming round the wicket. He's blocked Sehwag for a while. Although he got a boundary in the previous over, but he also did manage to beat him. 
get the impression that something's got to give now. How does Sehwag react? He's in the air, but also in the gap. Catch was the call from the bowler. But it's disappeared to the boundary. Oh, this is very smart cricket indeed. Just waited for him to come a little closer towards that off stump. And played inside out, finding that gap. Didn't bother to try and keep it all along the ground. He was in the air for a while. He forced the issue somewhat. But the important thing was that he had to get that gap and he got it. Got his left foot out of the way. Played a beautifully through the covers. This time, taking the man on in the deep is gone. Over long on. It's a no ball as well. And the first six of the Indian innings. Yes, indeed. This is probably the first seven <laughs> of the Indian innings. But uh, I got the impression that he did hear the call and go for it. Got the no ball call and went over. Now, mind you, there is that fielder at long on, about 15 yards in. But what a hit this was. Clean. So the first six for Sehwag and against the turn. Now he read it correctly. I don't think there was turn in it. It was the wrong one. It was the wrong one. Good pick. Michael Holding was saying yesterday, as a bowler, you don't want to look at those. Sail a long way over. Good pick. It was the googly. He's certainly denting uh, Canaria's confidence. That must be one of the objectives. Long series to go. All three men in the deep, so the single was certainly on. He's playing very smart cricket, Virinda Sehwag. He's going, he's judging Canaria well. <laughs> Terrific innings. Again, beaten in the air, dropped in two minds, whether to go forward or back. Getting the outside edge, two more to the Indian captain. Good thing about that was he read it off the wicket. Soft, gentle hands, didn't commit, didn't poke at it, let the ball come to him. Went forward, back, and then gentle hands, playing it as late as possible, letting the ball actually trickle off the face of the bat right. 286 for no loss oh that's magical effortless from Virendra Sevag beautifully done once again he's really played fabulously well in this innings of his Again, the effort was not there to try and hit it too hard. It's just timing, pure timing, on the rise, slightly in his quarter, bowled up to him. Full face of the bat, minimal footwork, but the toe pointing in the direction where he wanted to hit the ball. Great balance. Quickly on to 177. What would you do as a bowler when somebody is going so strong? <laughs> Nothing has worked for the bowlers from both sides. Indian bowlers struggled as well. A rare play and a miss. That was in the slot for him, but a bit lazy, just too far away from him. I think he was undecided whether to play a late cut or go for it whole hog. Fortunately, he didn't get an edge. And he's quite content to pick up singles. We're in the same bag. As far as I'm concerned, Shiva, he's really played this innings to perfection. 
His shot selection has been immaculate. His concentration has been perfect. And the number of times that he's come out uh, while, you know, going in and batting for just a couple of overs, coming back and then having to go back in again, it hasn't really changed his style at all. He hasn't been phased by it. He hasn't been affected by it. So really, very impressive indeed. a bit of concern in India about uh, Virendra Sivag not getting big runs but he always maintained one thing all I need is one big knock and things will change around he got off to a start here he's on 178 yes even in the one days uh, where people felt that he wasn't really reaching true potential he was getting those 20s and 30s giving starts and the Indian team capitalized on those starts but he himself didn't get real big innings in the one day as against Sri Lanka but he always maintained that he was batting well and he's proved it 291 without loss gives himself a little bit of room during the save off just ambling across he knew he had made good contact it's always a good ploy to attack the new bowler well, nothing's going to stop Verinder Sehwag. He's not scared to hit it in the air. Beautifully done, straight over the bowler's head. There was a long on, and there was a mid-off, so there was a bit of a gap if he just passed the infield. Now that mid-off fielder has dropped back. And good, sensible cricket now. He's pushed the field back. Easy pickings, ones and twos for Sehwag. And he'll realize, with one day remaining, he's got yet another chance for a double hundred, if not triple. Slip in a short leg now for Dravid. When you have a leg spinner coming into bowl, a fresh spell, and he comes around the wickets, and you know their mental condition, they're already on the back foot. He's definitely not enjoying it. Has he gone, man? No, says umpire. Judy Cutson not interested. Out of the rough, bounced, but Dravid himself also. Not at all impressed by the appeal. No contact with the bat. Has this tendency to play bat in front of pad, Rahul Dravid, most times. Just missing the edge, just clipping the pads. 296 for no loss. You know who he's supporting, 10 Sports. Joint production with ARY. He's toying with the bowlers, Virendra Sebag. Having a lot of fun, also brings out the 300 for India. Well, that is a terrific shot, but let's take a look at Rahul Dravid. Last ball, last over, that vociferous appeal. nowhere near it didn't play it didn't get any edge but the point is why was he trying to play a defensive shot to a ball coming in from outside the leg stump well the third hundred has come in 105 balls it's almost a runner ball you can imagine the domination at the moment it's only the 11th occasion the history of test cricket that the opening partnership has gone past 300 save out the dominant partner 187 35 fours and a six for him strike rate still over a hundred for Virendra Sevag, 
change of angle for Rana Navid. But he raised to his 200 from the 180s. Just take a look at this. this is what brought up his plays this shot exceedingly well, but this time he almost played it too well. Almost reaching that fielder there. Shoaib Malik making a valiant effort, an attempt, didn't quite manage to cup his hands under the ball, just landing short of him. I was just thinking when you said 195, he equaled the score in Melbourne. He was caught in the deep on that occasion, Arun. This time he got to a double hundred. 3 1 4 for Lolos. Well, he doesn't uh, waste time in the 90s or 190s, Virendra Sevak. Or in the 290s, Shiva. He got to his 300 with a 6 uh, at Multan on their previous trip. Fascinating cricketer. It is very important for India to bat well in this test match. They will carry a lot of confidence into the next game. Balling, balling, well, that bounced off the rough, off the pad, it hit the glove. He wasn't meaning to play at it, Dravid. Got a bit of extra bounce there and on the glove. Oh, hey, Brenda Sebag reacted a little too late. But it's all safe in the end. It's 3 1 6 for Nolos. Thousandth run for the game. You were talking earlier, Mikey, about the balance between bat and ball. No balance at all. Thousand runs and only five wickets to the bowlers. Remember, two were out, run out in the Pakistan innings. They'll be selecting a man of the match for this test match as usual, Ramiz. I think the man of the match should be any bowler who managed to get past the bat on three occasions. Slower in pace on that occasion, Afridi. <laughs> Finding the gap. He ran with the ball, Shreb Malik. Another boundary for Varinda Sevag. I think Shreb Malik is perhaps the quickest of the fielders in this test match. And he didn't have a chance of cutting that off. It's a very fast outfield. And he certainly didn't intend to dive. It's 326 without a wicket. Starts off with a wide one and Raul Dravid will that'll certainly release some pressure. I say pressure because he's in his 90s now on 98. Short and wide, and we know what happens to those deliveries, whether they are from a slow bowler or a fast bowler. Bad 
that one spun and I think it must have surprised Rahul Dravid also. He was once again shaping to push that one away through the offside. He's played it fine. Chase for Canaria. He'll give it up. And Rahul Dravid has reached another milestone, another 100. 21st Test Match 100 of his career. His fourth against Pakistan, his first as an opener for India. And his first as captain of India. It's going to take now a lot for India to change his opening partnership. Rahul Dravid and Varinda Sewa. 334 runs on the board. Beautifully placed shot. Three boundaries in this over again from the first four deliveries. This is how he got to three figures, Raul Dravid. Premeditated, you'd have to say. The ball was well wide above stump, but he decided to sweep wherever it went. What has been remarkable about this innings is that he's gone at his own pace, in his own style. Was not pushed at hitting the ball hard, was not overawed by his partner's brilliance and aggression. Abdul Razak gets there, only one run to Rahul Javid. 3.39 for not. Sewak 2.08, Rahul Javid 107. Still to come. Lakshman, Tendulkar, Ganguly. Spare a thought for Saurav Ganguly. He'd be itching to go out there and prove a point on a batting pitch like this. That's the best place to bowl to Varinda Sevak. Wide. Very wide. And some of those deliveries are bowled from round the wicket, some from over. Signal is by, first by of the innings. Not many balls have gone past the bat. So you're not going to get too many bites if the ball don't go past the bat. He'll find Abdul Razak there. Complete command. He's a good student of the game, Rahul Dravid. He took his time. It was an important decision, opening the batting. Brave decision, courageous move, and it has worked really well for India. So he sized up the pitch brilliantly. Started off cautiously, and then whenever he was provided with a little bit of width on... Uh, the off as well as on the onside, he put the ball away in the gaps. Kept it simple. And his concentration levels have been tremendous. He's just worried about his own self. And has uh, thought of himself as only as a batsman out there, which is another good part of Rahul Dravid. Not think... Uh, out there uh, as a as a captain just go out there and bat Oi. like a batsman
Miran was pushed back, so an easy run to Sehwag. He'll keep the strike and frustrate Pakistan further. 346 without a wicket. You feel that he's uh, losing his focus. But he bats like this from uh, the first ball. Even when he's uh, matured in the innings, in the middle part of his innings, he's, he's like this. Very casual, carefree. And once again, in Zamam al was late in reacting to that edge. It's a difficult position for uh, in Zamam. He normally doesn't position himself in the slips against the spinners. He's very good when it comes to handling pace in that region. When you hit the outside edge like this, and nothing happens apart from the ball going for four, it's very disheartening for the bowler, especially on these flat pitches. Not too sure it carried on the full to Inzamam. Again, not a great deal of pace to the ball, not tending to carry too far when it hits the edge. Round the wicket, he has got himself square in that slip position. It was uh, a fine edge escaping his outstretched palm. A bounce before Inzi pounded himself on the ground. Just a fraction late, Inzi. Different tactics from uh, Afridi and Zamam. Silly off now in place. Whoa. Quicker Whoa. one. And uh, well, Raul Dawit, as has been the case, read the script beautifully played it uh, in that arch of mid-off. Normally he was breaking his wrist to Afridi and playing him square, just maneuvering the ball with the spin. On that occasion, he knew exactly what was coming his way. Oh, boy. That's the over. It's 3.56 without a wicket. This could be the last over before T. Timings have been changed because of the stoppages in the play. His concentration it appears it's not going to waver. In very good position to play that cut shot. Every time that ball has been pitched outside the off stump, it has not spun back. Whereas few have spun from that middle stump channel. Last ball before T is banged to Shwe Bakhtar at long on. He collects, gets it back to Shwe Malik. Umpires will remove the bales and call it T. So at T India, in a very strong position, 358 without a wicket. Seem to have uh, dented Pakistan.
team's no wicket for 358 after 68 overs. Can't be too bad out there. And Sawag, who 217. 44 is amazing effort. No doubt the 12th man would have picked up his bat and put it in the in the fridge, in the refrigerator, just to cool it down because it's been red hot. No run there. As we welcome Wacko Yunus, can you believe the number of fours hit in this match? Well, it's amazing, Dino, what uh, Sewag has done to the Pakistani bowlers. He's uh, got a 300 uh, in the last series he played here. That was in Multan, and he hit 36, 36 boundaries. And he's already hit 40 here. Well, just actually, you're wrong. It's 41. <laughs> the poor delivery it was. Oh, even the Pakistani fans really, they just love him because he's got three scores over 200 in his career now. I know it's in the slot. I know it should have gone. But the way he's batted has just been absolutely brilliant. Well, it doesn't really matter if it's a good delivery or a bad delivery. He's hitting a good deliveries for four. That was uh, definitely a poor delivery. Smashed it. And now this is the fifth highest opening partnership ever in the history of the game. And one is a makeshift opener. Well, a few people in India say even Viru is technically, they believe, a makeshift opener. But when he's scored over 3,000 odd runs, an average of 55 plus, I don't think he's a makeshift opener. He's an opener. And a damn good one. Well, I don't see that uh, total of 413 has been safe on this uh, when these two are playing. 362 at the moment. I don't. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, it will be broken here. The way this guy is playing, we're in the Sivag. Another 10 runs is what. Uh, these two will look at. Two slips in a gully for Rahul Dravid. I must say, as we speak, those lights have got really bright now. And you can tell that by, the, you can see just see the shadows, the four shadows by the players. So they've had a little bit of a look here, both the umpires. Don't forget, the first world record we've got to get past is 4-1-4. That's their aim for these two batsmen at the moment. Just two hits away. Pankaj Roy and the Numankut came in Chennai. And some pretty good ones. 387. Glenn Turner and Jarvis. Good Aussie partnership there. The Laurie and Simpson. Yes, yeah, so Griffith and Hall must have been playing in that match as well. So that is a fantastic opening partnership. Cameron Akmar look, looking up as if uh, might have struggled to see that. He's done a really good job as well with the gloves. Let's not forget about that. It's just two buys. Just have a look at it here. His reaction here is a poor ball. Went to let it go. Good footwork. And he looks up. I don't know whether he's looking at the bowler or the umpire. But he did very well to get to it. Slot to go, end of the over, 404 for no loss. Seawag, 248, just two away from his 250 here. 404 for no loss. I need another 10 runs to break the partnership here. 
Inzaman Ul Haq, who's is trying to maybe get off the park pretty quickly because they've used the two fast bowlers here. And Shiva, once they use the two fast bowlers, particularly in conditions where there's poor light, maybe the Pakistani fieldsman saying, I want to get off the park. Well, you don't want to get into the record books for the wrong reason. Just a slip, no gully. Well, oh, good shot there. They might look for two. It just depends on his turn. It is quite slippery in the outfit. Going for two. That should be his 250. Well done. Well played, sir. Rahul Driver thought he wasn't going to come back. But that's a very, very good knock. Another milestone. He's quite unbelievable. <laughs> Having a splendid time in Pakistan. Virinder Seba continues his good form. And what a knock this has been. The strike rate of over 100 is quite unbelievable. Smashes it through the covers. Another boundary. Oh, he's a fantastic player. Would you believe he's the 67th player? Well, 67th time to score over 250 runs by a player in a test match. So it's done a few times, isn't it? But what a shot. That's his... 47th boundary. Only John Andridge has scored more fours in a test innings. A beautiful shot. Typical C-Wag. Now, he's one boundary array away for the record here. Oh, there's a slip there looking for that little fiddle. That's the way he plays, though. Well, that's the way he reached his double hundred. And he sees this as an opportunity to score. There is a slip. There's a man at third man as well. If we had to do a highlights package, Shiver, of the number of times they played a miss, I don't think we'd have five balls. Well, maybe six balls. Two in a row, playing a miss. Probably wants to get to that record in a hurry. He normally does that. He looks a bit concerned. He's also too. Yeah, I'm, look, I can't see it. That could be out. It is. He's trying to run it over to Thomas Sampson. Pakistan have got a wicket. Sensational partnership comes to an end. Run and a bit, the man to pick up a wicket. It was a short delivery and Virinda Sevak, the kind of player, is not going to let it go. But it's been a magnificent innings. Coming to a sad end, but joy finally for Pakistan, picking up their first wicket in this test match. Short ball, trying to ramp it over third slip, second slip, and all he did was help it on its way to Cameron Akmal. Not complaining now about the light, sir, are you? Well caught. Great knock, sir. Fantastic. Well played. 254, India, 410 for one. Only 14 balls were possible on a rain-truncated final day which turned out to be all the more heartbreaking for India as their opening pair missed breaking the 50-year-old record by just four runs. The dismissal of swashbuckling Delhi batsman at 254 meant that Vinu Mankad and Pankaj Roy's record of 413 established against New Zealand in Chennai in 1955 remained intact. Well, we've got the Man of the Match Award here. Well done, Virendo. Fantastic, mate. Viru, on the way you played, you must be pretty happy the way you hit them. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think we all are happy because we, we bowled well. I think we batted well and we really batted well. Me and, and Dravid almost break the record, but unfortunately we didn't do it. Mm. Uh, so we are happy. You, you love playing against Pakistan. It's three, three times you got some big ones against them. Yeah, of course, because they have a good fast bowling attack and love love to play against fast bowling and they, they are just try to bowl in, in short pitch delivery. So I love to attack on short pitch delivery. So 